Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. We have a professor of literature on the show today, and she is a published author. She has published three books, and today she's here to discuss a very special book that she's written. It's a children's book, and it's also made for teens, tweens, and adults. And I read the book, and I have to tell you, it was amazing. I enjoyed it, and I I just loved it. But the person who I want you to speak to, who's going to tell you a little about the book and about how she came about creating the book, is going to be Marjorie. So Marjorie, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Starting with my childhood or right now, what do you want? You could start wherever you like. All right. Um, born in Portland, Oregon, the youngest of uh, three or four, if you count family dog, and he really <laughs> was almost like an older brother. Um, and I grew up with a family that was uh, very together. You know, it seems popular today. If you're going to be interviewed, you have to have some horror you've overcome. Well, they've all, we all have adversity, and I've had adversity and deaths, but Basically, it's been a pretty blessed life, which is partly there because I feel that way about it. Right. I think people can look at lives as, as oh, woe is me. It's so hard to be a mother these days. I have four children. <laughs> and there they were, so you rear them. Yeah. Let me talk then about the book that um, got us together. It's called The New Cadets. And the publishing house is the Gabbro Head Press, which is the www.gabrohead.com. <laughs> and and uh, this book I started for my oldest grandson, who's now uh, going on 24 and, and a, a big, tall fellow, six foot four. And he was having night terrors when he was little, uh, five or six. And I bought him a stuffed yellow toy Labrador dog and said it was a guide, guide dog, a service dog, that it would be there in dreams with him. And he did say he saw the dog, Oliver. He named the dog Oliver. And that's the first character you meet in, in, in the book. Uh, it went on from that. I started writing a story about how these dogs are uh, recruited from toy stores and mm. then taken off to a special place, which is kind of magical, really very magical, but magical in a way that many stories aren't. There's no wand waving or spell casting. <laughs> it's, there are such things as, and this was great fun to write about, the variable sea. It's a, an ocean, a sea, but every 12 hours and 25 minutes, it shifts. Right. Maybe not much, but it might even be a pond, but it's usually a a large lake or usually a sea, you have to be careful. You want to be way out in a rowboat <laughs> in the ocean. <laughs> Stacy can tell you why she said, I'm saying that right now. She was once swept out to sea in a <laughs> rowboat as a girl. Um, all of those things. So, and there's a, a valley below where the school is, where the dogs are in training. Humans can't make their way down there. It's a descent. The stream that goes by the academy goes down to the lower valley. Humans just can't do it. They start down and they break out into a cold sweat and they leave. But the dogs who have taken on the ability to move, yeah. uh, they have, let's say, flesh now. They can go down there. And in that valley are moods, mood elements. And the first dog that goes down there finds himself laughing and happy at one moment and then irritable and grouchy or angry and these moods will occasionally rise up and you get a mood storm in the upper valley where all the people are saying you know I've, i just loved you for you've been so good to me it's a maudlin mood yeah or, or one where they're sour with each other or yeah. or terribly sad and that was fun to write about emotions which is something in your in your podcast i see that uh, um the whole yeah. idea of emotion shows up. Uh, so it, it's um, it's magic of a sort, but it's more like living in this world where we don't have oceans that change, but we do have seasons. We, we, we can't wave a wand and change things. Right. We have to learn to live with whatever it is that we're given. 
Yeah. And that's a great deal of fun. It was also a sheer delight to write about the moment when they're going through a tunnel on a train and the toy dogs are there. Those nine, that, well, eight at the start that have been recruited and they take on flesh. They start moving. They start breathing. And to, I didn't know what fun that would be, but yeah, all of a sudden, you know, one's looking at the other and one of them is particularly scared. Yeah. And they now they have to go and they have to learn about eating. That comes fairly easily. It's sort of innate with dogs, but right. they also have to be trained in using the toilets. I do that delicately enough, I want you to know, but um, <laughs> yeah, it, it makes me think about um, having a body and having a spirit and that the body, whether it's a stuffed toy dog or living flesh dog, or human body, it's um, it's housing for a spirit, right? And and our our spirits are, if we have good luck, we've got healthy ones, and we do all we can to keep them healthy. Yeah, very true. I you know I loved how you um, were so detailed in your writing, and that you could actually, as you were writing. You read in the book, it kind of, you could just imagine it in your head. It just, you, you gave such a, a defined and clear message and everything flowed so beautifully. And I loved how you, you were able to actually just not just read it, but you could imagine it as you were going along. And I'd love the descriptionist, you know, the descriptions, how you, how you were so, so perfectly detailed in how you describe the story. And I, I just, I loved it. Is, is this now, was this something that, um, that you've always wanted to do or is just your grandson, his experience was really what sparked it. Did you always have a love for, for children's books and maybe that kind of, kind of put a spark to it and a reason to actually pick up the pen and start writing away? Absolutely. My dissertation at Berkeley was on 19th century, um, Fantasy, British, not American, British fantasy, and, and wonderful, wonderful stories. And C.S. Lewis and Tolkien were born in that era, but mm -hmm. they did their main writing in the last century, not one century back. And, and um, yes, I, I always sort of wrote stories in my head when I was falling asleep, wonderful stories like the, the, when I was a girl. This is embarrassing the police had hired some of us children to go riding horses around Portland, Oregon at night and, <laughs> and rein in criminals. Can you imagine how well that would work? <laughs> I'd be more than Adrian because I'd fall asleep, but I'd start maybe another night thinking, oh yes, we've been, we've been chosen. We sneak out of our houses and we ride horses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of so, like that. Yeah, and right. It just seems ridiculous when you get older, but um, wonderful stuff. And I've always liked children's literature um, and wrote what I like to read. C.S. Lewis said that yeah. he wrote the books he liked to read. And it's the same for me. I, I'm a careful writer. I think you are too, Stacey, reading your writing. It's very good writing. Oh, thank you. And, and for me, I do a lot, a lot, a lot of rewriting. But one of the things in rewriting is... is uh, it can make things stiff if you're not doing that the right way, or it can make it flow better. Yeah. I used to say to my writing students that a good essay, a good piece of writing should be like a dance. Yeah. The dancer has rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed. And when the dance happens, it looks flawless and so smooth and effortless. Yeah. It's so you, your writing moves that way. It's very, very nice. And that's what I try for in my writing too. So by the time you're done, it looks like it was nothing. I just put the pen down or fingers on the computer and out it came. <laughs> it's really not that simple. Right. And I started this uh, book in my 60s and now in my 80s. Um, but I didn't go at it all the time. I'm, I was working, teaching right. at the university and I'm doing other things hiking, exploring and all. Yeah. So um, it would get written mostly during holidays. And then um, now retired, I finally said, time to get serious. Keep yeah. going. And I had written two volumes of the book and the publisher said, break it first volume and the second volume into two. So the first book is half of the first volume and the second book is ready 
to go, except for proofreading. My, it's easy to leave a mistake. Yeah. Know? Oh, yeah. You think you've got them all. Your friends have looked at it, and then something terribly embarrassing shows up. That and it's nobody... not even that big, but you 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 tend to the more you read it, the little you know minute little things you you pick up on. And probably most people wouldn't even pick up on those things, but us as the writer, we pick up on those things, but it's very easy to slip by, you know, you could, you could, right. you know, you could, you could have a book prep, proofread over 10, 15 times, and you might still come up with a little error here or there. It's just, it's just, it's just natural as a writer. No, but you don't want them. No, you don't want them now. Each one is a mortification for me. I have a dachshund that was referred to three times in book one as a wiener dog in one place I spelled it wiener dog <laughs> I, that was not in the final publication but barely barely made it and I have friends one who teaches German and any German speaker would probably catch that and still it slipped by it's very some, easy go ahead sorry what were you saying Stay no I said it's very easy for that to happen it is yeah I'm still very careful um, I have some music in the book and had a friend write, well, they're, they're songs and uh, there's a benediction and uh, a school song, which was fun to write because, you know, you have to do all the air, this and that, we, who, uh, yeah. like my grand high school, grand noble generals, all that stuff. <laughs> fun to imitate that. But she wrote music, wrote, composed music. Oh, that's and so nice. Book, another friend that I know in all my life is, uh, has written the music. So oh, that's nice. the end of the book. You can look at it or not. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But it's to have friends throw their bit in. Really fun. I liked uh, I liked how it was to be continued at the end. You kind of left it as a little cliffhanger, which I thought was very cool. And do you think that, do you think that a lot of the experiences in life, you know, you being so active and doing so many things, do you think a lot of your experiences kind of went into the book also or had played an impact? I certainly uh, did. Uh, I think it's in book three that one of the dogs goes out on the variable sea when it's an actual sea mm -hmm. uh, in a kayak, in a, <laughs> you know, one that you, you pedal. They do have them. They yeah, yeah. Them. But I had to figure out how a dog could handle it. They can't handle it. <laughs> <laughs> All of those things. And he goes through some caves out in the ocean that are cut through the cliffs. And that's from my own experience. There's a wonderful, wonderful place. I don't even think I want to say it because it'd be dangerous for people to go out there. Hmm. Where you can go through um, like a headland uh, on the Pacific Ocean. And there's caves that go through that. And it doesn't get fully dark because two or three places, there's a hole up on the wall where in the right time of day, sun comes in. And yeah. I, I put the dog through that. And every time I reread it, I'm just back there in that magical, magical tunnel. Yeah. But, but the friend who showed it to me, the strongest man I've ever known, he was originally German. Yeah. Um, he... Um, uh, said he went there by himself once and waves came in from both ends and he was right where wave he was going to get smashed in the roof so yeah. he rolled over and let the bottom of his boat hit the hit the ceiling yeah and his kayak back up and went out I wouldn't recommend it it's not a it was not a light thing but I went through with him at the right tide yeah yeah <laughs> with the right type of day with the light coming in so that's just one 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 experience but climbing or hiking or going through caves not on the ocean but other places too yeah it's it's there in all sorts of ways it's not as though i made a list and said this is going to be in this is going to be in this is going to be in. it just emerged it flowed yeah. it grew and I remember tolkien saying that did he have it all outlined he did not for him too, it was organic and he got stuck. You know, yeah. what's going to happen now? But hmm, well, where do I go? It's not, you have a general idea where you're heading. Yeah. It's, it's not just blank, but uh, it, it takes over itself and characters. You've probably heard this said before that a character will take over and say, no, I wouldn't do that. That's yeah. not like I'm going to do this instead. Do you, exactly. do you write fiction? 
I, you know, I, I had some really great ideas that I put together, but I never like went through and wrote it. I, I always wanted to, like I wrote notes and I, I wrote in diaries and stuff like that. And I had such great ideas. And it was funny because later on in life, a couple of people came out and published some fiction books, just like the ones that like the dreams and the ideas that I was having that I was writing down. Um, people had written fiction books about it. And I was like, wow, I couldn't believe it. And I was like, you know, I should have just, you know, just did it. I always wrote nonfiction, but I would like to do a, a fiction book, you know, actually really get really deep, dive deep into it and, and, and do something like that. Cause I have such a vivid imagination. I just haven't ever penned it down on, on paper. Well, it's not too late. No. I got that... writing this in my sixties. So it's, uh, it's about 18, 19 years that I started started at it so when you mature enough mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> and, and there is a nice thing about being older many things don't bother you criticism doesn't bother you so much you sort of know human nature yeah uh, and um, I you're getting that in the you know 30s 40s you're getting it all along it's not going to pop into your understanding at, at yeah. 60 but it it's all useful yeah it's very very useful it's so true now, with um, with your character, Oliver was the dog. So, was there a was there a reason why you gave him the personality he had, or was it something that you just created in your head, or was he amplifying so something, you know, and maybe another character in real life that you were trying to copy in a sense? Not with Oliver, but when I thought about him, he fits a certain. I don't know whether to call it technique gimmick something that writers do they often have the main character especially if that person's character is a narrator be a little bit retreating not yeah. not flashiest not not out there making yeah. all the trouble and they're observing often and i think he has some of that he's kind of an extra decent yeah. dog when you're learning to use the toilet the boys in the boys toilet with an older do a dog showing them uh the girls say that rumors have it that the boys have a an inch mark, well, or a, a measurement mark up the side one urinal, and they have high water contests as they call it, <laughs> lift their leg the highest. And Oliver doesn't join in, but I wrote about him. He wasn't. He didn't judge that sort of thing harshly. He was just one to hold back, and he laughs too when they, when the they dogs that knows he can't enter this contest he doesn't stand a chance but, <laughs> uh, there is a woman um annie the cook she is very much a cousin of mine really a cousin's cousin she had a catering business we yeah. didn't have shared blood but we shared cousin and um she's a wonderful woman very heavy very big very outspoken and um she and she's the cook in 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 the school oh wow and she's just a i just know how her voice is going to be what word she's going to use right so she's uh brought back she's deceased she's brought back into life and uh, oh, i like that. She is, it's, kind of, it's really fun i have her there yeah that's great i love that i love that and now when you were writing this book was there a certain message you were trying to get across you know and even though it's fiction was there something you were trying to teach others when you were writing this book, or was it just for enjoyment and just to let your imagination flow? I didn't have any plan to make any point, any moral. Yeah. But the morals are there. Um, what I think, what I believe is right and good is there. And it's easy with dogs because they are essentially good. Yeah. They and are. they try to do the right thing, though it'll happen in the next book. The two mm -hmm. of the dogs get into a very shameful dog fight. Mm. It's terrible. And everybody's horrified and shocked. Right. So these dogs are, like any of us, uh, imperfect. Mm -hmm. They have to pick up and go on. Yeah. And it looks like they are getting get booted out of the academy. But you'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So you were um you you've been writing pretty much your whole life. You've had a love for literature your entire life. And this is really right. you filling out one of your your goals, one of the things and you know, things on your bucket list you always wanted to do. You started it out a while back 
and you know you just wanted to you know finish it and uh it, it seems like you've done a, a, a marvelous job you know um I love the book I I thought it was uh, immaculate I thought it was a great book and for anyone who likes you know surprise and likes a book that's really detailed where you can imagine things and you know you can go away into another world because that's the those are the books that I like the best is when you read and you can kind of go, you know, go, go away for a while and just like, it, it takes you away, you know? Well, it's a delight to write on it. I, I, I enjoy doing so. Yeah. So you, have you always had a passion for imagination? Now you told me you took some classes, um, you know, back in the day or you taught classes for. I taught classes. I never, took, I've never taken a writing class and never had an urge to do so. Okay. They probably can be extremely useful. <laughs> especially to get yourself going but um I haven't uh uh trained in writing I just written a lot and you're writing your nonfiction. that makes a huge difference if you write fiction you've already known how to make a sentence dance and <laughs> throw away a word that maybe says exactly what you want to say but it it's an ugly sounding word like pulchritudinous means beautiful right. why would you say someone was pulchritudinous they'd <laughs> slap you <laughs> Uh, you know, so you you pick. I also pick words where the end of the sentence has the right rhythm, so the sentence wouldn't go da 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 da. That's too chopped off. It would have to go da 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 da, or a variety of things. But my ear is hearing, and I, reading your writing, I, I think it's going on for you too. Mm -hmm. That that um, awareness of how a sentence dances. Yeah, it's part it of it. Not just the plot. Not just the message. Not just the words, but the bounce, right? And the pearl. The I, 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 I love how you you did put some challenging words in your book, even though you you made it for all age age groups. You know, you made it for like you know for for tweens, teens, and and for adults. But you you know for the for the tweens and the teens, you did put a, a few challenging words in there, and uh, not too hard, but you know just to give a, a little bit of a a niche, just to. To make the kids really think, you know. I'm coming from a, an older tradition. Even the Oz books, uh, I went through that because um, I had a literary agent who didn't end up uh, getting this book uh, to a publisher. Uh, still have him, uh, but his wife was in uh, elementary teaching for children reading, and she said shouldn't have big words. So I started doing my own research. The Oz books are mostly, uh, like I write, easy words, but there's occasional solid word. Yeah. That's how you learn words. Right. When you're a kid. You don't, don't you don't necessarily know how to pronounce them, but you pick them up. Right. And the same goes for, for say, The Hobbit. And mm -hmm. I've got, uh, one of my books is on uh, J.R. Tolkien, and I know him well, uh, his writing well, and met his son, who's deceased now. But, um, Tolkien's books, even those written specifically for children, they are not going to hold back on the occasional more difficult multiple multiple Slavic can't even say it multiple syllabic word, and the same with C.S. Lewis, same with um, a whole lot of the Victorian writers that I uh, talked about in my dissertation. So it's I certainly am not trying to impress people with big words, but now and then. A fairly big word is just the right word and go ahead and use it. Go ahead and use right. it. When you were writing the book, um, so did you anticipate that it was going to be four series um, or you just kept writing? And just it just kept writing. And then I thought I better get this published or try to. Yeah. And it's a lot harder. In some ways, the real fun is in the writing. Yeah. It, it's that very true. It's very true. Now, if you wanted to like take away like, it, uh, and kind of put together like some of the things, the messages in the book that you really wanted to get across, you know, because you really it was it was a dog who could communicate with a person and and it, you know, and, and it helped that person, you know, so it was so was there certain perp certain messages that you really want to try to get across that could help people, even though it's a fiction book, you you kind of wanted to maybe, you know, entertain but yet maybe teach them a few things too along the way yes and no because i didn't list points i wanted people to go away with 
but they right. emerged and I then recognized them. Um, one thing I wanted to tell a story that's there. And I wanted to have experiences show up that I liked as a kid and as an adult, wanted some magic, slight magic. Um, but I began to see that ideas of loyalty and, and, um, and uh, determination, curiosity, humor, I don't know if humor is uh, quite what you're looking for, but forgiveness of yourself mm -hmm. and, and awareness of, uh, of uh, what's important in life. Yeah. In this world of partial magic, there's a scene coming up where the dogs will um, go over a hill to the farm that's on this, um, in this valley that's uh, where the school is. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the older dogs, guiding them take them down to the pond they said they're tadpoles or turning they're frogs now but they were tadpoles and the dogs are so amazed by that and they come back the next spring and they're so amazed and then i'm thinking i want the reader to realize how absolutely magical this this world is here and yeah. tadpole eggs that <laughs> grow ahead the tail and pop out legs and then <laughs> eat up their tail it's it's so full of magic all around us yeah so you want I, um, I think was it Tolkien or Lewis yes Lewis talked about you want to know the importance of things like stone and bread and water yeah. those should come across as magical as well as anything else I think that's amazing because it, it's, it's kind of you've tapped into a couple of genes you know like uh it's 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 nice because it's you know it's not just your ordinary children's book. There's a a lot of different things that you kind of tap into and 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 really make the imagination roll. You know, and right. I think that's what makes it so interesting too. It's not just a plain children's story. You really you fill it with a lot of different things, morals and magic and principles and 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 just different ways of just using the you know, using the imagination and making, you know, being able to just drift off into another world and all these different things can happen, you know, and but yet you made it also related to the earth world, you know. So it, you it know, is. even though it's yeah. So it's like it has a lot of different, you know, different things all wrapped up into one, it seems. And only certain people can talk to toys when they're recruited. Very special people can go and talk to a toy and they're always surprised. They, most of them have never run into a human being who can speak with them. So yeah, when I take the toys, well, they take on flesh. When they go back through the tunnel, they're toys again. Yeah. And I get some of the adventures are happening outside in the later books. One of the dogs that was recruited, a German shepherd, handsome, smart, willing to join in. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's stolen by people who have a sense something's going on. They don't know quite what it is that's happening. And so you follow his story. It was a, they search for him and some of the dogs, some of the ones who've trained to be dream rangers, if any school, are yeah. helping. So they go out and they're toys. They're just stuffed toys. And to, to describe them and their conversations with the humans, it's, it's great. It was fun. It's fun yeah. to do that. And how do they entertain themselves? Right. Uh, one, my publisher thought at one point that these dogs want to be real dogs. And I said, this is not Pinocchio. <laughs> wants to be a real boy these dogs are perfectly happy being personal toys it's a career they've always thought they'd have and then once yeah. they learn, get trained in how to work in dreams they go back they get hired out so to speak as um personal toys uh, and this is the culmination of their career so yeah. they don't want to, they're happy when they go back and they can't move because a lot of things are easier. Yeah. You don't get hungry. You don't have to go to the bathroom. You don't have an itch. <laughs> um, and and I, I try to make that point. They're completely happy as toys, but they do like the being inside the world where they can run around too. That's 
it's not something they scored. Yeah. It's nice because you you also learn a little bit about gratitude too. And and it also seems like it's kind of refreshing too to be able for a child to to be able to go to sleep at night and think that people are my dreams, the animals and they could become real, you know, or they are real when I close my eyes. Sebastian said he saw Oliver. Sebastian, my grandson, that the original Oliver was bought for. Yeah. Oh wow. We still have that dog. My daughter has has him. Uh, and toy store where he was bought. Doug and Melissa toy, if you happen to know those toys. Very nice toy company. Uh it, he was one of those. And the toy store still exists under a new name in Portland, Oregon. Oh he, how nice. Uh, which is fun. Yeah. Oh wow. So where can people find this book? Um it's the Gabbro Head. I have a copy of it right. Hold on by GPS. Here's here's the, the book. I the the pastels make me think, yes, ever since Barbie came out, pastels are big, aren't they? I have mine too. <laughs> there you go. Two of them together. <laughs> Uh, the Gabbro head is, is spelled G-A-B-B-R-O, new word head. It's a, a, a rock uh, in the Midwest, and it's the Gabbro head press, or nice. www.gabrohead.com. And it's out now. You can order it now. It's is it on at the market on the 15th, but people are ordering it now. Oh, that's excellent. That's excellent. And I assume it's going to be available on probably... Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, and all of them. I think so. I uh, just got an email from a distributor who had three reviews I'd never seen before. They were just lovely, nice and, as nice as yours. <laughs> and, um, I don't know much about this. Previously, I wrote a book. It was accepted. It got printed. I got to proofread a final time. Out it went. And now there's this publicity uh, publicist there i'm learning about a distributor you know <laughs> i've been an ignorant fool for 83 years <laughs> now, I'm, now i'm learning how the system works so mm -hmm. uh, the distributor was saying they're going to send it out to large uh, bookstores so they didn't specify which they were that's wonderful and that's if people want if people wanted to contact you and they wanted to maybe ask you questions or, you know, find out a little bit more about the book, where could they find you? What does one do? Give out their email or is that, how do you do that? What, do you have like any, social, I suppose. do you have any social networks that you're on? I don't, I'm really ignorant. <laughs> That's what I thought. When you, we first were going to get together, I thought well, we've had such different lives and, and Stella, uh, I started reading the different headlines or titles of your podcast. I thought, no, we share a lot, but mm -hmm. I haven't bothered with it. I never signed up for Facebook because I thought this will take time away from other things I want to do. And right. people tell me I'm right. Mm -hmm. you know, I was still rock climbing a lot and kayaking and working mm -hmm. and teaching. And, and um, I didn't want other things in the way. That's amazing. So I, I, I'm getting an education now. My youngest son is, um, keeps me pretty much in the 21st century. <laughs> <laughs> but but I'm not as much there as, as I could be. Okay. There are opportunities to be, but they don't bother. I don't see movies very much. I like them. You get me into one. I love it. But yeah. I tend to pick up a book. I love it. I love it. I think I think your outlook on life is great. I think it's great that you're so active. You were telling me all the different things that you do and that you're living life and you're enjoying it. And, you know, and you fulfilled one of your dreams, which was to write a children's book. And it not only became a children's book, but it became a series. And uh, and and it's a beautiful book. And I, I highly recommend it to others because I, I thought it was just fabulous. I thought it was fabulous. And I haven't like I haven't sat down and read a, a fiction book in a while. And so when I did read it, I really enjoyed myself and remind me of how much I do miss my fiction books, you know, because I hadn't read one in a while. But I You're gonna write one or two when you when you get there. When life yeah. gives you a little space, you're going to do it, I think. Yeah, I might. I might. Yeah, you, you know, I uh well, <laughs> I insist. I might. I actually might. Definitely. It would be a nice change. It would be fun. It definitely would be fun. 
I always was told by my children, I had a huge imagination. You know, I always used to make up stories when they were little, I, you know, it was just a fun way of, you know, to get them to do things. I would, you know, my, my son thought chickens were from, were dinosaurs, you know, I, you they know, are, in <laughs> dinosaurs are, they're related. They are, yeah. <laughs> mm. I also tried to make him believe that it was, that they were in the backyard and they came out at night when you were sleeping and, <laughs> <laughs> and things like that. People ask me what I want to do now with things, and I, I thought, well, what new thing? And I realized one of the, I want to go do some things I haven't for a while, like scuba diving or riding a horse. Oh, yeah. But what's entirely new? And I got thinking, hmm. And I thought I'd like to go on a horse pack ride in uh, the steppes of Central Asia in Mon Mongolia somewhere. Would that be cool? That would Imagine be very cool. Going that vast plain and the sky overhead and the horses and tents yeah. put up at night or yurts. Okay, so if somebody asked me what new I'd like to do, that would be great fun. That would be great fun. That sounds very yeah. exciting. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, we can do it. Yes, I would love to. I would love to. I love your mentality. You have an amazing mentality and I just, uh, I love everything about you. And I, I love what you've done, what you're writing. I love, I love the book. And it's been a pleasure having you on the show. And, you know, if anyone wants to leave any, any comments or questions for Marjorie, you could leave them in the comment box and I will tell Marjorie and she will get back to you. And uh, thank you so much for being on the show. Is there anything before we go that you'd like to any, any messages or any, anything else that you'd like to share before we go? Just hope people get out there and do the things they like and don't quit. Just yeah. keep doing them. I think that's... good luck to all of you, everyone, because luck is luck is part of it. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. Oh, this I... has been a pleasure, Marjorie. Marjorie, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. And you've been a delight. Truly. <laughs> really. Oh, you have a great you're doing day. What you're doing. You're doing it beautifully. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. I will. You too.